Hello, how's it going? In this video, I'll be evaluating this following integral. So the integral from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1. Now, in my most recent video, um, I solved a really hard integral. It was um, sine squared x over x squared plus x squared plus multiplied by x squared plus 1 from, I think it was... 0 to infinity, yep, dx, and I made just a little error at the end, so at the end bit, when I did the bounds, I had um, 1 and 0, and I had like 1 over um, e to the something, and I forgot to plug in the 0, so the answer that I put on that video is actually slightly wrong, but it's really easy fix, you just substitute the 0 up here, and that just turns into like a 4 pi, I think it was, but anyway, that's in just the previous video. But I did mention it in a comment, but the rest of the working is fully correct. Now this integral here, if it had an x on the top, we could just do a u substitution, it'd be a log. So if we had x over x squared, you could just differentiate the bottom and the integral of that would be just be log, natural log of x squared plus 1 plus c, just using a u substitution. But this integral, we don't have an x on the top, we have an x squared plus 1. And you notice we can't devise that into partial fractions either, because we have this parabola on the bottom, which looks like this. It doesn't touch, it doesn't have any roots, okay? Because this is y equals x squared plus 1, so it's not having any real roots, okay? It only has complex roots, okay? Now this actual function, what it looks like, I graphed it before my graphing calculator, just so I could get a picture in my head. It looks something like this. So this is a, a y and an x-axis. It looks something like this. It's kind of like, goes up and goes down like this. Obviously, this is a really bad drawing. But it's an even function. So if you wanted to, you could just integrate from, if you wanted this integral, you could also do from 2 to, to double this particular integral. You could go... 2 from the integral from 0 to infinity of this function here. You could do that because it is an even function because this area from 0 to infinity would be equal to this area. So all you'd have to do is double it. But in this video, we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to go straight into complex analysis. Okay. So how you do complex analysis is basically you let this um, the function you're integrating equal a complex um, function pretty much. And if you have any signs or causes, you replace it with um, Euler's formula, e to the ix, etc. But in this case, we don't have any of them, so we can just replace this whole function here as basically just a function of um, z. So let f of z equal 1 over z squared plus 1. Okay, now what we've got to do is basically we've got to draw this contour on uh, an argand diagram. So argand diagram has the imaginary axis here and the real axis here. And basically we want to basically make a little like a semicircle and in, integrate over it. Okay, so we're basically going to do this in the imaginary um, plane, uh, the, the complex plane. And basically going to go from this to our real function over here. Okay. And it always works, pretty much. So, let's say we're going from R, which is a really big number, and R is strictly positive, and you're going across here over some um, path, um, gamma, and you're going around here, and you go to negative R, and then you're going across here. Now, what do we have to do now? We have to look at for the poles, because, alright, we don't have any singularities at zero, but we do have some poles. So our pole is basically the roots of this um, function here. Now this function has complex roots, so we're going to have two poles. So we can rewrite this expression here as the same as 1 over z squared minus i squared, because i is the square root of negative 1, therefore square of i is negative 1, so this is equivalent to that. And you can do a difference of squares here, so you could just say, alright, 1 over z minus i over z plus i, product of that is equal to that. Okay? Now this gives us the pole, so we have a pole, or poles, at z is equal to plus or minus i. Now we've got to look for where these poles are on our complex axis. So we have a pole here at like negative i, and we also have one here. Now the only one we're going to be concerned with is the one in our contour. So our contour is basically 
our little semicircle we have here. So this is contour C. So basically, we're going to integrate over this contour. So we do it by saying this integral with a circle in the middle. That's basically what it means. It's like a closed area. You'll see it with like Green's theorem and all sorts of other theorems. So this is a contour, and we're integrating over a path C. So these are like line integrals. So if you don't know what a line integral, then you'd be very confused. So contour C over f of z. Now we can break this contour up into its parts pretty much. So we can say this is equal to the integral from gamma. So that's that path there going across there. And that's in complex plane. So we have to leave that as f of z dz. Now, but with this bit here, we're also going from negative r to r, but we're on the real axis. So we can go basically from all right, negative r to r f of x because we're in real territory again. Right? It's basically equal to this, um, the residue theorem. Okay, so the residue theorem basically means that our contour over um, our integral over our contour C is equal to 2 pi i multiplied by the sum of the residues of f of z. Okay, now how do we find the residues are? So we have a residue here, we only have one. Residues is basically the poles in our contour. So the residue, how we work that out is basically say, all right, the residue when z is equal to i. You basically say, all right, of um, f of z, that's a proper way to write it, but who cares, is equal to the limit. You basically say, all right, z goes to i, and then you basically have, um, if you were to rearrange this, it'd be z minus i is equal to zero. You basically multiply this expression by f of z. So you have z minus i multiplied by f of z, which is one over z minus i and z plus i. Now you can see that cancels with that. So if we apply this limit to whatever's left here, we're gonna have one over two i, okay? So if we substitute this up here into the sum of our residues, we're going to have, all right, 2 pi i multiplied by 1 over 2 i. Okay, this cancels with that and that, so we're just left with pi. Okay, and this actually happens to be the answer of this integral, but we can't, well, we can't say that until we actually prove that this integral here goes to zero. So we're left with, all right, our contour of f of z dz is equal to our integral from gamma of f of z dz plus our integral from negative r to r of f of x dx and that's basically just equal to pi all right now how can we make this integral look like the one we want up here so basically the way we can do it is we've got to basically have our bounds as infinity and negative infinity. So let's just apply a limit as r goes to infinity. So we apply the limit. So a limit r goes to infinity of this integral here. So gamma integral. And we I'll just leave it like that. Plus the limit as r goes to infinity of this integral here. So we have negative r to r. And we have f of z is 1 over x squared plus 1 dx is equal to pi, okay? So I'm just going to substitute infinity up here and here because um, there's no r's in here, okay? So I'll just rub that out and replace it with positive infinity and negative infinity and get rid of this limit sign, all right? We're almost done. Now we've got to do the hard part. We've got to prove... We, well, we've got, well, not really prove, I already know the answer that this whole thing will go to zero, but we basically got to show that this integral gamma, as r goes to infinity, it goes to zero. So, let's try and do it. So, how would we do it? So, we have the integral over gamma over f of z dz, that's equal to the integral, so it goes from r to negative r, and it's 1 over z squared plus 1 dz okay now we're going to introduce a substitution so we're going to let z equal to r e i theta okay now this is a perfectly good substitution because up here we've defined gamma as basically this little path this little semicircle here that goes around here all we've done is replaced it with the form of a rotation. So the reason we have um, that we let z equals r 
e to the i theta is basically because all right that is r is the radius of this semicircle here okay and this e to the i theta because of euler's formula that's just the um x and y components respectively okay because hold up oh we've run out of room let's just move across because e to the i x is the same as cos x plus i sin x so it's pretty much basically just stating this whole thing in a different parameter okay now theta has to belong between zero and pi because you notice our semicircles arc is only looking from here to here which is from zero radians to pi radians okay or uh, from zero degrees to 180 degrees so down here that's why we make that substitution so down here we've got to strictly say all right theta can only be between zero and pi okay and we can actually just replace straight up our negative r and r with pretty much that so we can just replace negative r with pi and r with um zero so we'll have right, zero pi and all right we've got to find dz so dz differentiating both sides respective variables we're gonna have r e to the r i e to the i theta d theta then we're gonna have one over r squared e to the i theta all squared plus one then we have dz which is r e to the i theta d theta okay then if we just simplify this a bit more we're gonna have the integral from zero to pi r i e to the i theta over r squared e to the two i theta plus one d theta we could actually just take this i at the front because it's a constant because it'll make it easier in just a second oh uh, actually no we can just keep it in there it's not going to really matter at all okay now we have to approximate this so let's just say this integral is equal to some like i so i is equal to this integral oh, i'm going to write it again my goodness all right, r e to the i theta over r squared e to the two i theta plus one all right now basically we're going to just take the modulus of this whole thing so modulus here now the oh that modulus goes on the outside now this whole modulus is going to be um less than or equal to basically the integral if you had the modulus on the inside okay it's just a little inequality so put the modulus on the inside over r squared e to the two i theta plus one d theta okay so this is what we've established so i'm just going to say all right i is this integral up here and i'm just going to move this because it's really annoying me how squashed it is all right and let's just move this across so now we've established this we can take the modulus and split it to the numerator and the denominator so we can just say all right i is less than or equal to the integral from zero to pi of the modulus of r e to the i theta and then you got the bottom bit now the top of this is just equal to one okay uh i think it was is it equal to one let me just think hold up if you take the modulus of that okay i know that's equal to one and that's equal to one okay so the top is just equal let me just all right so i when you take the modulus of that that's just equal to one if you take the modulus of e to the i theta that's just equal to one but you take the modulus of r that's just going to be r so i was quick to jump the gun there so that's equal to just this integral here not the inequality thing we're going to have the integral oh from zero to pi of r over r squared e to the 2i theta plus 1 d theta now what we're going to do is basically make this a bit more um more applicable now okay so let's just have, there's this thing called the reverse triangle inequality so if you have the modulus of a minus b that is um greater than or equal to the modulus of a minus the modulus of b 
okay? So this is an inequality that they have in geometry, okay? We can basically put this into this inequality and we can get out a simpler expression. So let's just say, all right, r squared e to the 2i theta. Now we need a minus, so we'll just say minus negative 1. And we can just put this into this inequality here. And then we'll have the modulus of r squared e to the 2i theta minus the modulus of negative 1. So therefore, have that. And if we take the reciprocal, we have to flip the inequality sign, remember? So we have the modulus of r squared e to the 2i theta minus minus 1 is going to be greater than or equal to 1 over modulus of this is going to be r squared minus 1. Now, since r is strictly positive, we can um, grade, it's a really big number. We can get rid of these absolute signs now. So we can just say it's r squared minus 1. Okay. So what does that do? Well, now we've got like a triple inequality now. So we now have the modulus of i is less than or equal to the um, integral from 0 to pi of r over modulus of r squared 2 e to the theta minus negative 1 d e theta. So this is less than or equal to the integral from 0 to pi over r over r squared minus 1 d theta. Okay, so now we can take out this entire thing here because it's not dependent on theta. So we can actually just say, all right, we have r over r squared minus 1 of the integral from 0 to pi d theta. So that's just going to be equal to um, pi r over r squared minus 1. So this whole thing is greater or equal to our modulus of our integral up there. Now, if we apply our limit now, so the limit as r goes to infinity on this side and this side, this whole thing goes to zero. Now, if our integral is smaller or equal to zero, in order for that to be true, it has to be equal to zero. So therefore, our gamma integral, as r goes to infinity, this thing disappears. And therefore, the answer to our integral from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx is equal to pi. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave some in the comments. I apologize for getting the start of my last, uh, the end of my last video just a tiny bit wrong, but it was just a really small mistake. Anyway, like and subscribe. Thank you for 100 subscribers.